Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. We are visiting with Amy Hope from the Canton Museum of Art with a brand new program. Very exciting to talk about. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Nice to be here. Well, it's great having you. And first of all, tell us a little bit about you before we get into art for health and healing. Yeah, I, uh, I grew up in Stark County, and then I went to Ursuline College for my undergrad in, in studio art, and then I stayed at Ursuline and finished my graduate work um, in counseling and art therapy. What was your dream? What did you kind of want to do with that one day? Um, I always have been inspired by art, and I love how it can be connecting to other people, and I love working with kids, too, so that was my, my dream. So what did you do then out of college? Um, I went on to work at the Christian Children's Home in the residential facility, and I was there for about three years. And then I went to Child and Adolescent here in Stark County, mm-hmm. and I've worked there for about two years. At the Christian Children's Home, now they've been here before as well. Did you use art with some of the children there? I did, yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about why that's important. How did children respond to being creative in that way? Well, with children, a lot of times they don't have that vocabulary um, with their emotional language. So art can really be beneficial with expression and connecting with one another um, and being able to tell their stories. Mm-hmm. Have you gotten to hear some pretty cool stories and seen it make a difference in a child's life? I have. It's fun to see when they have that aha moment, um, when they're able to connect and see what maybe they're still working on and feelings. Um, so it's it's a great way to open up themselves. Have you actually gotten to see a child's artwork go from dark to happier? Um, and throughout treatment, I would say so, yes, yes. from like a time span. Yes. In what way? Um, well, a lot of times when they come in first for treatment, um, they have so much on their plate. Um, and so sometimes the artwork can feel dark and and they feel very chaotic. Um, and then once they start really working through their images and through their own treatment, you can see it blossom and you can see it how they change as long as, as well as the artwork too. Mm -hmm. I've heard there's something parents should kind of be watching for, um, and then sometimes we can misread it all together. But that if a child doesn't show hands or something, they always draw their people with their arms behind their backs, uh, that that could mean some kind of um, social issues or something. If they draw themselves very, very small and mm-hmm. everybody else very large, those are some maybe telltale signs. Are there things that parents should be watching for in the artwork? Because I'll say this as well. One little boy was questioned on it, and he said, no, I just don't know how to draw, ha- draw hands. It, so mm-hmm. I just make, that's how I make people. Yeah. So we can misread it, correct? Correct, yeah. It's all about asking. It's being curious and being like an investigator when you're looking at artwork and asking those questions. Um, it goes back to that whole story of little boy drawing with the black crayon all the time. And when they were questioning him about it, it was, well, that was the only crayon there. So um, it's really important to to ask those questions. But if you do notice, yeah, sometimes they can feel small or sometimes they feel like they don't have feet and they can't move. Um, so sometimes it can be very true. So just be watching and use the child's artwork as a springboard for conversation. Conversation, for sure. Yeah. yeah. What I, also could should we never say, what is that? Um, I would always ask open-ended questions. How? Um, Say, tell me a little bit about what's going on in this side of the drawing, or tell me a little bit about what's going on with that little boy, Um, and make it into a story. And so sometimes that helps with a child being able to express, um, because it doesn't feel like it's about them, but it's about the artwork. So much better to say, tell me about this picture, rather than, so what is that? Right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Totally understand that. Well, Amy, so um, pretty interesting background that you bring to the table. Now, how did you get involved with the Canton Museum of Art? Um, Well, right now we are starting a brand new program, Art for Health and Healing, and connecting the community with the museum. It's a fantastic way to bring people in, show them the current exhibits and the permanent collection, and then have them do an art experience themselves. Um, What kind of art experience? Right now, we've been focusing on um, pieces that are in the current exhibit, Dreamworld, um, and using that as kind of a intervention or um, a way to kind of talk about their own um, mm-hmm. experiences. Mm-hmm. And what are people's responses to this so far? 
they have been so positive. They're excited. They feel inspired. Um, it gives them a different way of communicating, uh, telling their stories. Are these at certain times, or can this be any time someone decides to go to the art museum? Because I think sometimes when you're going to the art museum, you don't think you're going to be creating art. You're just there to look. Yeah, these are set uh, program times with the agencies in the local area. So several agencies, Child and Adolescent and Conquest, um, as well as Domestic Violence Shelter, have been a part of the program, um, bringing in some of their clients and having them go through the program. Oh, wow, now you're really getting branched out here. So um, I'm thinking that the just as you described art as being therapeutic to children, it can also be very meaningful to women going through a domestic violence situation. Talk about that a bit. Yeah, art is very open. So it is really beneficial for any population. Um, You know, especially when we have a mom and a child coming in and we have them do art together. It's about connection and um, sometimes reconnection. Well, let's talk about art and what it is, because for some, art can be very intimidating. Art's great for Mm -hmm. you. You're good at art. But, uh, you know, somebody that's already having a rough time in life and now someone hands them a blank piece of paper and says, Mm -hmm. make art. What's art? (laughs) I think that's that's very true with a lot of people. Um, they can, especially after going through the exhibits, uh, they they feel intimidating. Um, but I also I always remind them it's about the process. This is about having fun and not really thinking about what you're doing and just l- creating um, to see what happens. That it doesn't have to be perfect, and so, it's not going to be. Yeah, with Comquest, domestic violence, and and one other you child said? and adolescent. Child and adolescent. Whoa, what kinds of different things, or are they different? Different approaches. Do you take which each of those populations? Um, yeah. So with each population, I look at technique um, there with children trying to make sure it's fun and it's collaborative. Um, and so looking at material, that's also really important, too. And then with domestic violence, it's a different way. And then conquest. My goodness. What kinds of things do you get into with them? Comquest, um, you know, very similar. Sometimes you take uh, a task that you creative um, created and you apply it just a little bit differently um, with each of those. And that's the one I'm really curious to know. How do they do um, perhaps someone new in the program and they're trying to get away from an addiction of some sort to when someone's ready to leave the program, the difference in the way their artwork might look? Have you been doing this long enough to see that kind of a transformation yet? Um, No, not with the Mm -hmm. program yet. Um, But with Conquest, I've heard so many great feedback about wanting to bring their family members, um, bring their kids. So they feel the connection and they want to share it with their families. Well, we want to give a huge shout out to the Mental Health Board, right? How are they involved? The Mental Health Board um, has been a great uh, advocate for the program. And they've helped us with the grant um, providing this program. So tell us again how how you got, was this their idea? Was this the museum's idea? How did this all get started? It's so interesting launching something brand new like this. Yeah, it was the inspiration of two of the staff members at the museum um, that felt that they wanted to get connected, um, and they did their research, and they they asked the mental health board if they would like to be a part of it. Um, And so that's kind of how it got its start. And then how did they find you? (laughs) Um, Well, I heard about what they were doing, and so I, uh, you know, applied for the position. Um, It was a fantastic opportunity. What would be your goals, Amy? Uh, What would you like to see happening with this program five, ten years down the road? Oh, wow. Um, Well, I hope that it continues growing, um, that we connect even more so with the the community um, and do a lot of community projects for the museum and for the community. Oh, neat. Yeah. We're speaking with Amy Hope. She is, are you director of uh, Art for Health and Healing or what's your title? Uh, Program coordinator. Program coordinator for Art for Health and Healing. Interesting name, Health and Healing. How did you come up with that? Well, I think it was the museum who came up with the idea of wanting to find something that was inspiring and healing for individuals, um, that there's that connection and wholeness between art and healing and the health. 
How does this work exactly? Um, does some Are these programs that like drawing class and you say, oh, I'd like to sign up for health and healing? Or how exactly does a person get involved with these classes? Right now, we are just going through the agencies. So we're setting up little groups um, through the providers. Um, the providers are, you know, have these set groups already, so a lot of them are bringing them already to come to the museum as an outing. Um, especially with like ComQuest, they have those set groups. Um, and sometimes it's a nice break too. I've heard clients say that they like having something different. Mm-hmm. It's like a field trip for them. Yeah, almost it probably feels like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can't just at this point just say, I think this would be very helpful, very beneficial. You can sign up anytime to take art or art classes at the Canton Museum of Art. Yes. But for your program specifically, these are through these mental health board supported programs. That is correct. This collaboration. Well, I'm always curious to hear stories. Tell us about some of the people that you've met and what this has meant to them so far. It's really unbelievable, some of the stories the art will pull. Um, a lot of times it pulls a lot of inspira- inspiration. Um, I have had a lot of groups ask um, about, how do I get to be an artist? And we have that whole conversation of it's hard work, determination. Um, so that that's kind of inspiring to hear and be able to have that dialogue. Um, a lot of times people will will just admit that they feel intimidated coming to the museum or they didn't even know there was a museum. So we get to have those conversations. How do people get in touch with you? Or maybe there's um, another agency that's thinking, if you're open to taking more on, Mm -hmm. that they could get in contact with you and and be able to provide this kind of an experience for the people that they serve as well. Yeah, they can reach out to me um, through my email, amy at cantonart.org, um, and we can, yeah, communicate and hopefully um, spread this program through the community. What do you like best about it, Amy? I like how it's inspiring, and it's about connection. And are you finding yourself getting to work with children? Because I think that's what originally brought you in. Yeah, we've had a couple kids, um, kids groups that come in. Uh, the youngest has been three years old. Um, so it's been amazing to see her experience walking through the gallery and then um, doing the art experience. Yeah, so. tell me a little bit more about that because I, I think it's got to be very, very rewarding for you. Yeah, oh yeah. It, you know, it's fun to see kids talk about the artwork um, in the gallery. And we talk, because DreamWorld's all about storytelling. And so we go through the gallery and we talk about, well, what's going on in this painting? What do you think this guy is feeling? Or what do you feel like it's going to happen? So it really gives them that imaginative storytelling experience. Um, Has any art surprised you uh, that's come from children or any of the people that you've worked with so far? Mm. Um, or what's been maybe the most surprising thing that you've found since starting this program? Um, I think the most surprising thing that I have seen is how responsive everyone has been, um, how they're so willing to engage and try, even though they sometimes can feel intimidated. Um, they're always willing to share, too. How long has this been going on? Um, we started in December. Wow. So not even a full year yet. No. Are you surprised maybe at how well it's going This was in just a short amount of time and the number of people that have been impacted by it? You know what? Not quite. Not really. Because mm-hmm. I, there was some, there's something very special here. And that's why I wanted to be a part of it. There, there's something that calls um, to people when it comes to art. And they want to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. Amy, what's the best way people can, can reach you? Yeah, they can reach me through my email, amy at cantonart.org. Awesome. Amy, thank you so much for what you're doing in our community. Thank you.